Good morning to everyone. This is Pete and Dorcas Consenta with you on this June 6, 2021. And so glad to have you with us. We are Cornerstone Assembly Independent Pentecostal. We're also Missenta Ministries right here in downtown, well, not downtown, but South Cambridge. <laughs> a little bit nicer in South Cambridge. Amen. It is June 6. It's the day before our 47th anniversary. Hallelujah. Amen. That's why. Ooh, that, that. Such workers made the suit, right? You made your own. Oh, you made the jacket. Made shirt. You made the shirt. You made the right, pants. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Just the shirt. And it's high for the pants. Okay. And uh, I'll show you a picture of a minute here. And uh, right, there you go. All right. But it's, uh, tomorrow's our 47th anniversary, so it's good to know. Amen. Let me show you some pictures first before we get to the message, which will be in Psalm 141 this morning. <laughs> There it is, okay. Psalm 141. Hopefully you've turned to it there by now and read the 10 verses that are there. It's short psalm. But uh, here, let's go back uh, 47 years ago. And here we have the wedding party coming our way. All right. And why don't you say who's there from left to right as I take off my hot jacket. I'm going to take off my jacket, folks. So. Well, it's on the left. On the picture, it's Ellen uh, Probst. Leona Moss, me, Pastor Pete, Bob Wittick, and Arnold Prince. All right. Whoops. Keep that. Bob Wittick was the one that witnessed to me. Quite heavily. Bob was high school. And so, he had a port in Rome as salvation. Of course, Arnold here. Arnold, uh, this would be uh, uh, Ellen's wife there. Oh, well, Ellen's husband. <laughs> it is the 21st century. All right. And uh, so there you have it. Let's bring the family up now. And, of course, uh, let me find that. Remind, remember, folks, I'm nearsighted. But we were together in Bible school, too. Yes. Yeah, we were in Bible school. Everyone there was in Bible school except Wittick at the time. Wittick came later. Uh, yeah, Leona Moss was not there. Okay, you're yeah, right. So, but, uh, so, uh, but there you have the uh, wedding party. And now the family. Let me transition to that. Okay. Left to right, uh, Chris Harvey Yoder. This is Dorcas' dad. Mom, Miss Rhoda Yoder. And, of course, this is Dorcas, myself, and then my dad. Uh, Peter, Sr. I'm repeat. My mom could not make it. She was sick at the time, uh, dying of cancer. Uh, my aunt was there, uh, which would be a uh, fraternal when you say fraternal. Well, anyhow, uh, it, it was not a technical course, but uh, to my dad. So, uh, and twin there, his twin sister was there. And so, but there you have it. There's the family, all that. And of course, now uh, the parents made it into the kingdom of God, not because it's their parents. Our, to our parents, it is because they made a commitment to Jesus Christ. So, there you have it. All right, and now let's get back to uh, the text that we're going to look at this morning, Psalm 141. We won't read it yet until I change things around here. Like I said, folks, I'm near side. I got to look at this stuff really close. And they also updated the software for all this. But uh, hopefully one of these days they'll update in such a way I can increase the font so I can see what I'm doing better. All right. We're in Psalm 141 this morning. Guard your mouth. And very important subject. Always ask God, what shall I do for this Sunday's video? And uh, listen to what he says. There's things I want to do sometimes, but then he wants me to do something else. And we will go to Psalm 141. If I can find it now for you here. All right. It's all set for us to roll. And so we'll go there now. Let me transition over to you. There we go. And let me bring it up on the screen so I can read it too. All right. And let's all scroll down. Okay, Psalm 141. And we'll read all 10 verses. Yava. Now, of course, in your translation might say Lord, but in, in this translation, uh, it will have Yava. This translation, okay. It's really my uh, configuration. I, with perhaps maybe the New King James and all that. Anytime I see the uh, divine name, which is uh, in, for English, it's all 
capitals L O R D. I try to put the the tetragrammaton in it uh, so people know it's not just a word. You gotta understand what it means. Yavah means the existing one. And of course he's the great one, the good one, the only one that we should cry to. So Yavah, the existing one. I am I am. I am that I am. I cry to you. Make haste to me. Give ear to my voice when I cry out to you. Let my prayer be set before you as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. So here we go. Now, here's the text we're going to Set a guard, O Yavah, over my mouth. Keep watch over the door of my lips. Do not incline my, my, my heart to any evil thing. To practice wicked works with men who work iniquity, and do not let me eat of their delicacies. Let the righteous strike me, it shall be a kindness, and let him rebuke me, it shall be as excellent oil. Let my head not refuse it, for still my prayer is against the deeds of the wicked. Their judges are overthrown by the sides of the cliff, and they hear my words, for they are sweet. Our bones are scattered at the mouth of the grave, as when one plows and breaks up the earth. But my eyes are upon you, O God the Lord, and you I take refuge. Do not leave my soul destitute. Keep me from the snares they have laid for me. That's very, this is a very important line for the 21st century. Keep me from the snares they have laid for me, and from the traps of the workers of iniquity. Let the wicked fall into their own net, while I escape safely. Now, we're just going to look at 3 and 4 and bring out two things about what we see here. We are to guard our mouth, and it's to be guarded outwardly and also inwardly. And so the first one is verse 3. And, by the way, this is a great prayer. This is a great prayer to pray before the Lord. And uh, similar to this, by the way, I think it's uh, Psalm 9. I think it is. 1914. Oh, yes, you got 1914. Not the year, folks, but 1914. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord. Yeah, I could have added that. I'm going to have to do the next time. Psalm 1914. That's very important. Uh, so set a guard, O Yavah, over my mouth. Uh, keep watch over the door of my lips. All right, now, notice that Yavah is to set the watch. Now, that doesn't mean we sit back and do nothing. We have to listen to God, amen? And we have to pay attention to what it says. So even, is, and it's not just talking to when we're typing a reply on social media. Always ask God what to say and how to say it and so on. Uh, and therefore you might, you might, you might have less trouble. <laughs> I don't know. Sometimes you won't. Uh, it depends what's happening out there. And so, uh, but he's to set the watch. Now, of course, we are to cooperate. We should listen to him. And obey him all that it says, but if we set our own watch, we'll probably have Barney Fife at the door of our mouth or something like that, or um, Mo of the Three Stooges or whoever. <laughs> well, uh, Larry of uh, you know, Laurel Hardy. And so, uh, well, I'm sorry, not Larry, Laurel of Laurel Hardy. We'll have him. Uh, no, we want Yavah to be at the door of our mouth and to he put a guard there and to keep an eye on what we're saying. And so outwardly, yes. Okay, so also watch, uh, watch what is both going out and coming in. Bear that in mind. We're going to talk about inwardly shortly, I can see in this message. But what, you know, watch what's go both going out and coming in. I have a little notation here that if you turn to uh, Nehemiah 1324, we won't do that now, uh, that you will see, and let me bring it back uh, to us. Uh, you will see that there was a problem with the exiles uh, when they came back to Jerusalem. And of course, maybe you don't know what on earth I'm talking about. And that is, you know, it, it is good that we should read God's word from front to cover. And let me explain that to you. There came a time whereby the Jews were taken to Babylon, uh, the northern part of Israel, they were to take away to Assyria. And because of continued sin and disobedience and rebellion against God, uh, Judah was taken captive to uh, Babylon, and just a handful were left in, in the area, which went down, sad to say, to Egypt against God's will, 
And you can read about that one over in Jeremiah. But uh, when they came back to Jerusalem and Judea, or Judah, you might say, uh, what happened was they began to mingle with the people of the land, and their boys and girls began to speak the language, not of the Hebrews, but of Ashdod. Now, so be careful what's coming in, and we're going to touch upon that pretty soon. That's very important, what we put into us and all, what we listen. We can't help but to hear stuff throughout the day, whether it's politics or whether it's about sex or something like that or about drinking and all. And you can't help but hear that throughout the day unless you want to be a monk. Are you a monk? No, I'm not. <laughs> no, God has left us in the world. In John 17, uh, Jesus prayed to the Father, I pray that you don't take them out of the world, but you keep them from the evil that's in the world. And I'm paraphrasing that. That's my paraphrase at this point. I don't have it from me. And so we got to be careful what's coming in. And we'll deal with that shortly. Uh, because it affects what's going on at a lot of times unless we deal with it immediately. But we are to keep a guard at our mouth. And that guard is Yavah himself. Really Jesus Christ when you come right down to it. Yes, Jesus is Yavah. There's only one God who is Father, Son, Holy Spirit. One God who subsists. That's Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. There's not three gods. So, yes, Christ is the standard. What would he say? What would we not say? How would he say it? And that's kind of skewed in our time also, that people would think Jesus was always sweet and nice and kind and gentle and all that. And uh, But yet they forget that he rebuked the Pharisees and other religious leaders. Uh, he even sternly rebuked his disciples at times, right? Remember good old Peter, when Peter was trying to convince Jesus to stop talking about going to the cross. You know, forbid it, Lord. And so he takes, he, you know, out of respect, he takes Jesus aside and says, you forbid that, you know, uh, that you go to the cross. Quit talking like that. And Jesus says, get be, he, he says out loud, he looks at all the disciples, and he says to Peter, get behind me, Satan. That hurt Peter, didn't it? I'm sure it did. You know, the you know the wounds of a friend are faithful. And so we got to keep that in mind. And so that had to leave an impression on Peter. Peter really, really, really loved the Lord, uh, but not with the power of the Holy Spirit at, at that point. Peter loved the Lord with the Holy Spirit after the day of Pentecost, uh, after he was filled with God's Holy Spirit, and he was most bold. Most bold. Amen. All right, so... But uh, what's coming out of our mouths? Now, so we've got to watch out for stuff that's coming out of our mouths, unclean language. Now, what I mean by that, and by the way, there's like six or seven of these things that I mentioned, so it's not just that, but unclean language, it's not just cursing, but it's uh, it also includes childish talk. Sometime back, somebody noticed that I was on Facebook and they became my friend. In fact, maybe one or two. Uh, from high school days, grade school days, you know, and when you're in grade school and if you're not saved, you're not going to be talking to cleanest. Even, you're not, you might not be saying strong cuss words. Now, they do now, nowadays. But back then we did, and I would have my mouth slapped real quick, okay? Only adults could talk that way. <laughs> but that's how it was, yeah. But if I would say something at seven or eight years old, smack! I'd say the F word or the S word or something like that. I would get a good crisp slap across my face. Uh, and and I would deserve it too. Or the wooden spoon. Mama's wooden spoon. But if, so it wasn't stuff like that. It was more talking about body, uh, bodily things and stuff like that and all. And talking stupid. And it's sad to say uh, when these people became my friends, they thought I was still talking that way. Now, this, this is like, what, 50 years out, about, you know? Now, hopefully, I hope everybody changes for the better, even if you're not safe. You have more opportunity to change for the better if you are safe, okay? But uh, when I make a contact with someone that goes way back, if I can find them at all, I don't think, and I don't try to talk to them the way they talk years back. I just kind of search them out first how they are today 
and see where they're at. But uh, this one guy, he thought I was going to use this baby language and stuff like that. And when I would not reply, uh, he kind of backed off after a while. He doesn't contact me much anymore. But you're, wel you're welcome to. <laughs> I just don't. I got saved. I got saved at 17. And it's not that anyone's perfect at the moment. You get saved. You are perfect positionally. But you're not perfect progressively. And it takes time to eliminate some of these things in your life because it becomes ingrained in you. Ingrained in you, okay, and so, and you think you think some of these things are okay to do because your parents have been doing it or your society's been doing it, and they're not okay. But anyhow, it's also like uh, you know childish talk, and also uh, when we speak, sometimes people have the spirit of the world behind them. Uh, about maybe a year or so ago, there was a preacher in the area that. You know, he rode the wrong wind, and basically he was into this BLM stuff, basically, and all, and, and all trying to, to be friends with the blacks. Listen, okay, it's okay to be friends with the blacks, but you don't have to do that by the spirit of the world, okay? And so he was white, of course, and uh, then he's, he's, he's apologizing to the blacks on for our for us white people, for enslaving them. You gotta understand, there's lots of Caucasian people whose ancestors never enslaved anyone mm -hmm. that I know of, okay? At least not in this country. Uh, none of my ancestors, I can tell you that for a fact right now, none of my ancestors had black slaves. I can prove it. My ancestors didn't get here until the early 1900s. <laughs> so, <laughs> and you had the Sister Dorcas's, right? You're, right. And none of us were cool people, or Amish. Amish man, right? And the Amish, the Amish didn't have slaves, right? So not every Caucasian person, I like to say Caucasian because I'm not white. My shirt is white, but I'm not white. Okay? I'm, I'm a future thing. <laughs> and all. So, but not, not every Caucasian person had a slave. And not every Caucasian person uh, helped to reduce slavery or to make black people disadvantaged. And you gotta understand that fact. Many Caucasian people help black people to become equal uh, according to law and stuff like that. And many are still working along that line. But there's this spirit of hatred that's going around, and it's on this side about race. It's also the politics and all. If you start talking with people that say that violence is okay to like, for example, this passing about the election, which they say is stolen. What does God's voice say? Okay. If someone steals from me, what do you do? Give me. <laughs> if, what, did you, what did you say? If they take your uh, cloak, give me your tunic or something like that, right? Yeah. Might be cold. <laughs> but no, no, no. Uh, if you look over in. Uh, First Corinthians chapter five. Now that's out of context, of course. That's in the body of Christ. It talks about being defrauded. You ought to be like permit yourself to be defrauded. Not that you become a floor matter like that. But I don't see anything in the New Testament that encourages us in the political realm to be violent and to try to take over the capital or something like that. So I'm completely against what happened on June sixth with what those people did. At the Capitol, what four people died or something like that—it's terrible. One guy committed suicide. All right? You might not like what I'm saying, but think about it. What spirit is behind what you're saying? Are you thinking like the world? Or are you thinking what the Word of God says? All right. You might you, know, you say, "Well, I'm an American." Well, you should be a Christian first of all. Be a Christian first of all, then be an American, and that's the way it should work. And keep in mind. What does it say over in, uh, it would be Revelation 11. The kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign, rule forever. Amen. So that's about to happen. And uh, so you don't know when Christ will come back, nor do you know when you're going to die. But if you're getting into politics like this, be careful. All right? It's okay to... I'm a conservative. It's okay to be conservative. It's okay to be Republican. 
but I'm not out there to shoot people, kill people. I'm not out there to overthrow the government. I don't listen to these prophets uh, because there's lots of false ones out there. They'll contradict each other. And all. I keep hearing, well, you know, in the Old Testament, sometimes it took years before prophecy come to pass. But you just keep on saying that, okay? Uh, get into what's happening right now. And the thing is, forget politics and get into the mission of edifying the body of Christ. Building up the body of Christ and also winning the loss. If you're a Christian, that should be your two main goals. Forget politics, okay? I'm not saying don't vote. And I'm not saying don't have a voice. But don't get militant about it. And don't get hyper about it at all. And a lot of tough people out there. And, but when the chips are down, they're not all that tough. All right, so uh, things like that. Also, horse joking. You know, some examples that we got to... You make sure that they don't come out of our mouth. Coarse joking, that's got to stop. Uh, persistent rehashing, complaining, whining. Now, it's okay to just try to figure things out at times, Paul, but there's, that, you, you have to come to a point whereby that's got to stop. And so, instead of reiterating things, okay, they did this to me, they did this to me, they did this to me, that's got to stop. And also, uh, put a guard at your mouth. I'm out there, he's the guard, or him put the guard. So you don't say anything that Jesus would not say. So you do not say anything that Jesus would not say. About maybe six or eight years ago, there's a guy in a church, and uh, he's walking around, and he's saying that, you know, the Quran and the Bible is you know, the base of the same thing. No, they're not. Okay. They're not the same thing. So, no. Uh, just say what Jesus would say, and he would never, ever condone sin. I try to bring out that point. Uh, if you read the gospel very carefully, there are times you could say he embarrassed people. Okay. Uh, tonight, we might get to the uh, woman caught, caught in adultery in John chapter 8. And uh, think about that. How long did she stand there? I mean, we could read that passage maybe in, what, under two minutes, right? But I think she was there for like at least five or ten minutes, okay? And Jesus didn't run off the bat and say, okay, look, you guys are a bunch of sinners. Uh, you just don't have the right to stone her. And I'm not a sinner, but I'm not going to condemn her. And I just tell her, just go and sin no more. He could have done that. But no, he made her stand there as they kept accusing her and they kept counting him, and uh, so he just kept that up for a while, and so don't you think she was embarrassed? I would say so. I would say so. All right, but uh, also anything not directed by God's Holy Spirit, don't say anything that's not directed by God's Holy Spirit, even if it is an okay thing to say, sometimes an okay thing to say may not be said at a, at a certain time. The Holy Spirit might say, hold back, hold back, hold back, and you listen to God's Holy Spirit. There should be an ongoing communication between you and God at all times, right? Bear that in mind. Also, improper negative thoughts about yourself. I'm scum, I'll never be, you know, I'll never amount to anything. And also, improper pride about yourself. This, this is pride. I'm so tempted sometimes to get on Twitter and just post scriptures about pride. And they're all negative. <laughs> I would say, in honor of Pride Month, here is this scripture. <laughs> oh boy, that side picked a good word to elevate, didn't they? Yep, they sure did. And you can see there. And let me go on here, okay? So, improper negative thoughts about yourself, and by the way, and improper pride about yourself. Now, there's such a thing. As a godly balance in God's word. Uh, for example, uh, yes, in the New Testament we're called slaves, anyway, but yet, on the other hand, we're also called the Lord's friends. So both are there. So it kind of balances things out. In fact, I have a message online, and now it's both in video and also audio. It had just been in audio, first of all. And I'm going to show you where it's at right now. It, there you go. Right below my moving mouth, okay? 
there you go. The audio is at archive.org slash details. Balance your brain. That's the title. And so each of those words need to be capitalized. Balance your brain. Balance your brain. And that's the audio. There's the video version of that. Some people, and I, I think more preachers should do video if they can. So you have charts and stuff like that. I, I like this, okay? And so it's not just you see someone's mouth for what, a half hour? Anybody can do that, right? And, and all. Well, some are pretty good at it, though. I mean, I, I enjoy listening to some people. But it'd be even better if they would show a chart now and then, or at least, you know, put the scripture up they're talking about. It. The video is at YouTube, and there is the URL down there. All right, HTTPS colon and two four slashes and U two Y O U T U dot B E four slash U C A J capital X J T B capital V capital F capital A. I'm not going to say it again. <laughs> there you go. It's an older video and before. I think 2016. Before that time, I did not have the software where I could incorporate a camera and so on. And uh, I was also very reluctant to do live videos because if you make a mistake live, it stays there. I mean, I could go back and I could get a, a editing uh, equipment and so on, editing software, and edit out what I said wrong. Everybody says something wrong right now, that, right? So they, they all do. I think if you look at some of the bigger names, uh, they might have some of their stuff edited and you don't know because they do it in a professional way. And that's pretty good. Pretty good. So but so that's online for you in regard to what's coming out of our mouths, okay? Uh, real quick on that too. Today we're living uh, at a time where people like to exalt themselves. So you hear this and I get sick of it all the time. Uh, uh, you know, I'm exalted, stuff like that, and all. It's okay to, to you know, to realize what you are in the Lord, but you got to balance it out that without Him, you and I, as it says in Psalms, we're just a worm. And you and I are sinners without Him, okay? So you got to keep that in mind. All right, now, all this stuff I just mentioned plus more, all this negative stuff, let's get this URL off of here. Uh, all the stuff that I mentioned, if it comes out of us, that means that there's a problem on the inside of us. And so let's now look at Luke 6, verse 45, coming our way. A good, man, a good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good, and an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart brings forth evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaks. Okay, we'll break this down real quick. Because we only get to part two of our message this morning. So, a good man. Now, when Jesus says a good man, now you might think, well, there's a contradiction because he said over in the Gospel of John, no one's good. That's true. Uh, but the thing is, a good man, the only way to be a good man in this sense is to have Christ in your heart. Okay, so you got to take everything in context. You just don't take a scripture by itself. And think you're going to get everything out of that you should. No, a good man in the context of that you're saved. So a good man, out of the good treasure of his heart, brings forth good. Right? And, and that's good in the eyes of God. Not what you think is good, not what the world think is good, thinks is good, but what God thinks is good. Amen? An evil man, out of the evil treasure of his heart, brings forth evil. And so out of the bones of the heart, his mouth speaks. So there's stuff in our heart that's got to come out, and we got to bring that before the Lord and put the good stuff in there. Amen. Put the Word of God in there. It's, it is good for Christians to start speaking like the Word of God speaks, right? in a balanced way also, but speaking like the Word of God speaks. Now we get to the next one, and so let's bring up the Scripture verses uh, one more time there. And over here we got Next part, verse 4. Inwardly, do not incline my heart to any evil thing, to practice wicked works with men 
who work iniquity, and do not let me eat their delicacy. There's, four, there's three clauses here in this verse, in verse 4. Three clauses. And here you'll see progression. It starts with the heart, and then you start practicing the evil thing, and then you're going to partake of the results. Okay? You don't want any of that. Okay? You do not want any of that at all. So, uh, no, you want to stay away from that. So let's look at these parts here. All right? And you might think, whoa, do not incline my heart to any evil thing. But does God do that? Well, let's put it this way. Uh, he does. He has things set in motion, basically. He has paths, and he has, what should I say, uh, you know, uh, what should I say? Not paths, it's more than paths, something, something else. I'm lost in words at this point. But let's say you're, I used this illustration before about predestination, but let's look at it this way, too. That, uh, uh, forget about going to Ocean City or whatever, things like that, but let's say you're in, in Cambridge right now, and, uh, or, uh, let's not pick Cambridge. <laughs> let's pick a big, big city, and you know that in a big, big city, there's some parts that are unsavory. Okay. Now, you know, if you drive or walk down those areas, you might find yourself in trouble. Okay. So, what do you do? You stay away from that, okay? But you see, that's very set in motion. Uh, yes, God does not create evil, moral evil. He creates calamity and all that. But he does not create moral evil. And since Adam and Eve sinned, there has been these, what shall I say, uh, conditions that exist. Whereby, if there's evil, then that's going to go on. It's going to get worse all the time. And, uh, so, and if we participate in that, then... The Word of God says our heart will be conditioned along that line. This is one of those edicts, okay? If we listen to evil, that's going to affect us. Amen. And that is one of, what should I say, the edicts of God's Word, the statutes, or even a judgment of God's Word. If you dabble in sin, if you start hanging around, and if you start messing around with these things, it's going to affect your heart. Okay, so, and so what, what's being done here by the psalmist, he realizes, of course, he might, he might stray at all. And uh, so, the thing is, he's asking God, help me, Lord, not to start, you know, going after these evil things and all that. And, and help me not to get sucked into that. And a good way to stay away from all that would be, let me bring this other scripture up, would be over in James, chapter 4, verses 7 8. Therefore submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Now we have a number of things here. If you do not want your heart to be inclined to any evil thing, and submit yourself to God. You know, ask God to keep checking you out all the time. And then when there is a temptation to hang out with that which is evil, you know, and it's not just people all the time, it's what you see on the internet, and what you hear on the news and all that. And once again, politics. Please stay away from the, the anger and the hatred of politics. I'm not saying don't stay away from I'm not saying stay with politics, I'm saying stay away from the anger and the hatred of politics. Uh, now, the distrust you can't help but to have it there, because I sure can't, for example, with all due respect to Democrats, I cannot vote for a Democrat uh, other than one that's local right now. He's okay. He acts more like a conservative than anything else. Uh, and he's on the county council, so I vote for him. But that's the only Democratic I, I vote for, Democratic. Uh, some years back, someone came to our door. He was running for the Maryland House, I believe, and he was a Democrat, but yet he says he's Christian, he has Christian values, stuff like that. I'm thinking, well, I asked him a couple of things. I was like, why are you running as a Democrat? Well, you know, uh, they might listen to us better if I was a Democrat. I was like, no, no, I know what's going to happen. If you get voted in, you will start voting along with them even though you say you are a Christian. And I'm glad he never made it in. 
how they, I, I thank God he never made it into their own house. So uh, I had to think, why, why, I'm not being mean, but you got to understand the Democratic Party, and I'm not trying to talk about politics either. I'm trying to say what's in our heart, okay? A lot of them stand for abortion and also they overdo it with taking care of what we call the poor, okay? Uh, they, they want to keep giving them a hand out all the time, and basically, your mercy in that case is really cruel. You're teaching that person not to obey God and go to work. So, that's what they do. Not all, once again, not all Democrats do this, but I have to wonder about that. I don't mean to make this political. The thing is, in our time, politics has played a great role uh, what's going on in the Christian wall. Hey, I resist the devil, and he will flee from you. So every time you say no to temptation, you're resisting him. And also, every time you determine, once you find out there's something wrong inwardly about you, and you ask God to deal with that, and help you deal with that, and to take care of that, that's also resisting the devil. Uh, draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. That's a promise from him. And so be draw near to him and cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double minded. And by the way, James is writing to Christians. Whew. James was writing by the Holy Spirit to Christians. So he says here. I mean, you know, some people don't like what I say. James is more hard than I am. <laughs> A lot of times, okay? And uh, so, but a lot of people, you know, look James, my goodness. But no, purify your hearts, cleanse your hands, you sinners, purify your hearts, you double mind. And I, for wonder, I had a wonder at first about the title of the message. And that's the actual title that I had years back, Guard Your Mouth. It sounds so, what should I say, up front, like I'm in your face, but I'm in my face too. I have to guard my mouth too, okay? Whatever I say to you, I have to say to myself, amen? Amen. <laughs> All right. Okay. So, yeah. And that's, that should be true for every pastor, every preacher. Some preachers don't follow that. But, uh, no, uh, guard your mouth and all. And I try to do that a lot of times. I'm trying to think of an example right now. Uh, any, any curse words, that's, that's something else. But it is like, really like baby talk, something like that. Also now, the uh, other line here, where it says in verse 4, maybe we'll bring that up again, since we carried so long on this one. Uh, transition. Getting the other part of verse 4. To practice works with men who work iniquity. And so you don't, you know, after you start hanging around people, you start, you might start doing what they're doing after a while. And you might want to curse and you might want to drink and so on. And that's how the world is, by the way. You know, we just went to an event this past week and these people, most of them are not saying so on. But to them, drinking is okay. This is the thing that they do. And they might think they're drinking moderately and so on. But we want to abstain from them for various reasons. So, uh, but so you, you start hanging around people act while you start acting like they're doing it all. There's a guy called Simon the Sorcerer over in Acts chapter 8, verse, uh, if you read that in Acts, in Acts chapter 8, 18 to 20, you'll see that he wanted to buy the ability to uh, grant the, the authority or the gift of the Spirit. He wanted to buy the authority to impart the gift of the Holy Spirit. He saw Peter laying hands on people after they got saved, and they start speaking in tongues. And for some reason, this really enticed this guy. And so he offers Peter money. Here's some money. Tell me how you do that. <laughs> no, 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 no. And what did Peter say? Uh, I'm sorry. Okay. You, you, you're not supposed to do this. No, he rebuked the guy. He says, may your money perish with you. He, he really rebuked the guy. See, we're a little bit too soft today. Yeah, and yeah, and the problem has been exacerbated by the fact that 
attention the past few years. If you do put your foot down, someone might get really super angry. They might shoot you, something like that, you know? That might happen. And so it's kind of the ability, which I say, the, well, the ingredients for the old time revival is not there to some degree. Now, there are some preachers that will put their foot down, and that's good, and it should be done. Uh, but today, you know, people get so hyper and they're so, you know, trigger happy with uh, getting back at you. you know? And then the uh, other part here, and do not let me eat other delicacies. So what happens is after you start practicing these things, practicing these things, it's too hot for you. Uh, that you become back, you go back in the world, as it says over 2 Timothy 4.10, Demas loved the world so much that he forsook Paul. I paraphrase that. Demas loved the world so much that he forsook Paul. And I guess he saw this, this ain't my the life for me. Whereby, hey, you know, Prison and all that persecution, that's not for me. Ah, not for me. Nope. No, he forsook, he forsook Paul. But now, let's sum all these up here with one verse from the New Testament. And I guess, oh, not yet. Yeah, I guess you could. Yeah. Let's sum all these verses up with Ephesians chapter 5, verse 11. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather, Again. Yeah. If you do not do that, and if you participate in that, and so on, and you'll eat of the delicacies, which includes damnation, that's the final delicacy, is damnation. You don't want that. Yes, you can backslide. Now, Christ must be the standard, and he must be glorified in all that we say and do. But in all that we say, he must be the standard, and he must be glorified. And so we got to get vengeance out of our heart. I'm going to get him back. If they did that to my son or they did that to my daughter, I'll kill him. I've heard people, I heard Christians say that before. I tell them, you've got to get that out of your heart. You know, don't, don't hang on to that. They've been saved so long, don't hang on to that. You're damaging yourself if you hang on to that attitude. God will take care of it one way or the other. If Either he'll, either I guess, say it'll be crucified in Christ, and that's taken care of there. They went to the cross for Christ, or they will die without Christ, and they'll go to hell. So either way, God will take care of it. Don't you worry about that. So, yeah, Christ must be the standard, and he must be glorified. And he is also the authority and power to place that guard over our mouth. And we must agree to that guard. Let Christ be that guard of our mouth. And so let's conclude with a positive exhortation. And this is also in Ephesians. Let's go back to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. Right. If it's not going to build up the body of Christ, don't say it. Now, sometimes you have to rebuke. It's okay to rebuke as directed by God's Holy Spirit. I'll give you one more example before we close. What people talk about. They talk about marriage like it's a, it's nothing. You know? And they talk, Christians talk about their ex. If, they got, if they're divorced, they'll talk about their ex-wife or ex-husband. This is my friend. According to Luke 16, 18, you don't have an ex. That person is still your spouse, according to Luke 16, 18. Read that carefully. I cannot get around that scripture. I know other people do, the whole this Matthew stuff like that. But nowhere in Matthew does it really say that you may remarry. It doesn't say that. It just shows you who is causing who to sin. Nor can I get around the verses of Timothy and Titus that says the pastor or the deacon needs to be the husband of one wife. Yeah, but divorce ends in marriage. No, it doesn't. Read Luke 16, 18. That is absolute. I read that you know, when probably the maybe the second year I was saved, if not the first year I was saved. I read that and I thought, that, that sounds absolute. <laughs> and I'm so glad my parents never got divorced. Uh, 
But the thing is, Christians talk like it's, you know, divorce, it's okay and stuff like that. And, uh, well, I can't handle this, so I'm going to get medication. Whatever happened to Jesus? Whatever happened to Jesus, my friend? Okay? I'm not trying to pick up people. If you're facing depression or anxiety, Jesus can't help you. I know that sounds like a, 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 a trite phrase and all that, but he can. If anyone should be anxious, it should be me. Let me, let me bring back the camera so you can see my wife's reaction. Yeah. No. No. <laughs> 50 years ago, was I not more nervous than I am today? See? Honestly. I was scared, worried, and I was first saved. I had anxiety and all. Lots of things and all. And so now, I'm more calm today, huh? Yeah. All right, so. Maybe too calm. <laughs> Maybe too calm when I preach. I'm sitting down too much when I preach. But my friend, listen, if you're safe, get the garbage out of your mouth. Put a guard in front of your mouth. And really, get the garbage out of your heart. And put a guard at your mouth. Guard your mouth. That guard should be Jesus himself, the Holy Spirit, directing you what to say and how to say it, when to say it, and so on. And friend, if you're not saved, you're on the road to hell anyhow. And we want you to come to him. And we want you to turn to him. If you want to make Christ king in your life, please pray this prayer. And say, Father, forgive me. I am a sinner. I ask Christ to come in. I surrender all that him. I give him all, Father. Help me, Lord, if you have prayed. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. If you pray that prayer, on the end that we have for you two things, we have seven rich growth of Christ that would be at ArcGod.org. We've had that URL earlier, but I don't know if we got there. Then you go to ArcGod.org and see it there, or on one of my pages at Sapphire Streams. On the audio resource page, you'll see it there. Also, we have a Basic Elements Christianity, a series of lessons for you. Free, you don't have to log in. So that's why I do not need a security certificate. I don't want to get one. Okay. I told you why before. But the series of lessons, and it's inter basically interactive. I mean, there's a glossary uh, and so on. There's an index of words and all of that. If you don't understand something, I have some things that can help you and all. So basic elements of Christianity, that's for you at sapphirestreams.com forward slash DEC forward slash all lowercase letters. That is for you. Now, before we get to the prayer request, uh, I want to bring up a praise report, and let me bring that, switch things here now. Coming up, I want to bring up, it's on, uh, there we go. Alright, now I'm going to roll this down for you. And, on our prayer request for church call, we had a, you know, one's Prayer requests that stay there until they're met a lot of times. And we had one about this couple down here. Uh, let me get this out of the way. Here. Here they do that. There you go. Okay. I can hardly pronounce his name. But we kept praying these people. I just called him Cowser, but that's not the last name. Uh, it says here on June 3rd, uh, ICC has learned that the Lahore. High Court, this is Pakistan, and by the way, we thank God that they did this, and we also thank the High Court of Pakistan for doing the right thing, because many times these blasphemy laws are used just to pick on people, or as a vendetta against them, you know, a bit vengeance, because they just don't want to go think I offended, so we're going to accuse that person of blasphemy. Uh, I think the lady here Okay, let's try to get his name for okay. a They, The High Court of Lahore acquitted Shafat Emmanuel and his wife Shafufa Khazar, two Christians sentenced to death under Pakistan's blasphemy laws. Now, Shafufa and that, uh, well, it's Shafufa Khazar. Uh, really, if you look at these names, look at real, real, close, real close. The first name is the surname with the wife's name in the feminine form. 
Okay, you might think that's odd, but that is also true if you study genealogy. Uh, that could be why my name is Macinta or Makuta and so on, uh, because it was taken from a lady or whatever. <laughs> it's kind of complex when you do genealogy, but out you know across the world, naming people is not the same as they do here. So you will see that the, the first name here is the surname, and it's forced by gender also. So Kaiser was in the same cell that Asia Bibi was in all these years. So, but anyhow, uh, these are two Christians that were sent to death uh, under Pakistan's blasphemy laws. Uh, the acquittals and a nearly eight year legal struggle that saw the Christian couple deal separately on death row. Death row. Uh, it took so long because people on the high court didn't want to mess with this at all. <laughs> uh, and so they were afraid because they had tension in their country too. And uh, they didn't want to ride a start because, hey, you're letting these blasphemers go. And so, but finally they, they, they quit them and they, they, they continue to do the right thing in the fourth court. All right, let's do our prayer request. First one, Bangladesh. On April 13, several Christians were worshiping God and having fellowship when the Muslim man came over and blamed them for disturbing their fast on the first day of Ramadan. Poor baby. An angry mob of Muslims soon formed and started beating four Christian men with sticks and stoning them. The four brothers in Christ suffered head wounds and their lives are still in danger. Pray for these men to have courage as they heal from the attack and pray for them to grow bold as they continue to follow Jesus. Pray for the attackers to find salvation through Christ as they seek God during Ramadan. Jesus, I just pray again for these individuals. I pray that you might just uh, touch their uh, bodies. <coughs> Help them to heal from these attacks. And I pray also that you might give them emotionally. Help them to have the courage to continue on serving you. And I pray for the attackers that you might help them to, to be convicted. I pray that you might help them to, uh, as they, as it said that they are seeking God. I, I pray that you might just help them to hear you speaking to their heart and help them to find you as their Lord and Savior. And Lord, I thank you for the, the many Muslims that have come to know you. I pray also for uh, my friend this morning, a uh, Christian couple that is serving as missionaries, uh, and they often uh, will witness to Muslims. I pray that you might encourage them and give them the strength that they need. I pray also that you might help them to see many more uh, salvation of the Muslims that they witness to. And Lord, I just ask that you might uh, help many people to receive you as their Savior before you return. I thank you that your return is very soon, so that you might help us all to be ready. I just ask you. Uh, Pakistan, several Christian homes by now that we just get, had a praise for in Pakistan. That doesn't mean that everything's okay. So, uh, so we just took off in Pakistan, India, elsewhere also. So several Christian homes in Pakistan were burned down in religiously motivated attacks on April. On April 1st, William Ness's house was set on fire while he and his mother worked in the field destroying everything he owned. <laughs> That's a bad, bad, a poorly written sentence, okay? <laughs> Whoa, okay, they need an editor. Don't call me that. Alright, in that case, during the last week of April, seven other Christian families had their homes set on fire by Muslim extremists attempting to take their land. Pray for peaceful resolution of property disputes in Pakistan. Pray for provision for those who lost their homes. Pray for the authorities to take the necessary action in these things. Father, we do pray that you protect your people, and we pray that where there is a dispute about property, that you help the Lord to resolve these things in a peaceful manner. And we pray for those that lost their homes, that you provide for them. Help the Lord to seek your favor, and help the Lord to know where to turn, and to find what they need. And we pray for the authorities uh, that you help the Lord to take the necessary action to stop these atrocities and 
Help them, Lord, to obey your voice and pray. We pray for those that do these things that you saw in their hearts. Help them to turn to you and help them to give their lives over you, we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. So glad you could join us. And once again, we're Cornerstone Assembly Independent Pentecostal. Uh, all of us in ministries. I'm about to say where we meet. We meet tonight at 7 p.m. at a church called The River at 14 Canada Street in Cambridge, Maryland, Sanctuary 2. We're not associated with the river. We rent from them. And also, we will meet again this Thursday at 7 p.m., same place, at a church called The River, Sanctuary 2, at 415 Academy Street in Cambridge, Maryland. And we're looking forward for Christ coming back. Amen. Amen. So we're going to say, Maranatha! Maranatha.